In this tutorial, I'm going to be going through the different ways that you can use custom coding with Reactions 2. So there's basically three ways you can do this. There's what we refer to as inline custom coding, block level custom coding, and external coding or the user.py file, which is a separate file that you can add to your script. So let's first look at inline custom coding. So I've got a reaction open here. If I open actions and then select an option from here. Um, let's do set color. So by default, you'll see the menu system. You can import values in here and that, that's all you need to do. But if you need to do something slightly more complex for say the color number parameter, all menus have a option called custom code. And when you click this, you'll see that this um, value in brackets changes to custom code. And now you can actually input Python directly in here. So if if you just take a look at this, this is the underlying code which is being generated by this action. So we can see that it already says self.song tracks zero. And if I was to change the track number, you can see that it updates. So now I've, I've set it to track four. So rather than just inputting a standard value, you could, if you were using Python code, you could enter your own um, variable name. Or maybe if you need to do something like use the color value of that track, but then minus something too, for some reason. You can just enter it directly in there. So that's the inline method of adding custom code. So one step further to that is to actually remove the entire action there in terms of the menu system and then just enter your own custom action essentially. So you, as you can see when I switched it, it took the code that we've generated here and it's still displayed here so you can just edit what you've already started with the menu system and then if you switch back what it actually does is it will the menu system will go back to what you'd last set it as so if you change the code in here and then go back it will go back to this again so this is handy if you want to do something fairly long. It involves like a few lines of code. You can put it in there and you can do the same for conditions. You can select from the menu system what you need to. And then you have the option here for custom where you can enter Python or you can switch to the a custom block. So you could have multiple custom blocks and each one is essentially its own portion of the if statement, if you understand if statements and how they work. The third way of custom coding is to do it via an external file. Um, with Reactions 2, you can now use a file which is called the user.py file, and I'll provide that with this post. Essentially, the user.py file, if I just open one, is a Python file, and you can write your own custom Python code the same way you would do um, normally. So you're kind of moving outside of the whole Control Surface Studio system. Um, and then what you do is you place the user 
.py file inside your script folder. So if I install this script, um, actually let me just delete a couple of things. Um, let's change this to... We'll just do an exit reaction here. We don't really want to do anything here at the moment. Um, delete this action. Okay. So this is just saying when script is initialized, exit the reaction so it does basically nothing. I'll install that into live. And then if I go to my MIDI remote scripts folder in live, custom coding. So if I open the file, um, I think I'd already saved this one so let me just delete that, install it one more time. Okay, CSS custom coding. So if I open it, right now it just has these three files and what I'm going to do is add the user.py file to it and there's two different versions depending on the version of live that you're using you need to make sure you grab the correct one so I'm using Ableton Live 10 so I can use this one just copy and paste that in there and now if I open this it's just a very small Python file with a couple of kinds of boilerplate bits and pieces so we have an init function which is called as soon as the file is initial initialized so you can add code in there and it will be run as soon as the user.py file is initialized and then you can add your own custom methods so there's this just this one custom method called test method and what it does is it logs a message to the CSS log and the message is it works so that's in my script what I'm going to do is call this method from within the reaction and you do that by going to the action section of the action block and I'll change that to custom code and to call this custom method I will do self dot user which means that it's pointing to this file and then all you need to do is add the name of the method that's it and then I just install that and then fingers crossed if I reload uh, do I already have it in? CSS custom coding. Because I'd already tested this before starting the tutorial, the script already exists. The script initialized. This reaction uses the listener script is initialized. And the action calls the custom method, which is in the user.py file. So if I just change this to something else, reload live and go back to Control Surface Studio and it output that. I could also let's just test this out. So I'll output something else here. Self dot log message um, user.py was initialized um, so now as soon as the user.py file gets initialized this gets called you don't need to call anything from within the reaction to get this to happen clear those 
user.py was initialized. And then this one is also called because of the reaction. So that's it for a very brief custom coding tutorial. If you have any questions, I'm sure there's plenty of questions, please do let me know. We have a question on the forum, which is actually a good question that I didn't cover. And the question asks, I was able to call the user method and even manipulate it by passing some args. I noticed, however, that it wasn't able to assign and send a modifier to the method. According to your error, it kind of sounds like from this bit, global name M1 is not defined. It sounds like you're not using the correct syntax for the modifier, which is simple change. And I'll quickly show you now. So I've got a script and I've got one reaction. The listener um, is called when the script is initialized and then in the actions there's a modifier being set. Modifier is M1 and I'm setting the value of M1 as Lord Byron. There's no reason for that, just a random string. And then in a second action, I'm calling the test method in the user class, which is in the user.py file. Um, so if we just take a look at this, we have the test method. And then I've added a variable named who said it and then I've edited the string to say it works said and then who said it is added there and it's wrapped in a string that's just so that this log message works correctly and then here's the important piece so to use a modifier the value of a modifier to pass that to the user.py file you need to use this syntax self dot get underscore modifier underscore value and then the modifier name which is m1 so i'm passing the value of m1 so yeah that's all you need to pass in and then just make sure that you're adding an um, an argument sorry not a yeah a variable and then you're using that here yeah? And if I, I think I've already installed it, but if I open the log and reload live, you can see it says it works, said Lord Byron. And just to go back over that one more time, I've set the value of the M1 modifier as the string Lord Byron. Yeah, I also change this to text, so I can enter text. If you want to enter a number, make sure you select number. And then I added another action with this custom code. Self.user.test underscore method. And then open brackets, self.getModifierValue M1, close brackets. And that's all you need to do.